something out of 1985. audio and video and I may end up just stripping the audio and using that like I was sure. trying to do an audio, a little quick audio clip. Cool. Um, but if it looks not really decent, I might throw it up as a video. So, let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm not typically in front of the camera. So I might be the reason I actually okay. <laughs> um, So I should uh, compose my thoughts for a second. No, no. no. <laughs> I was like being a professor. You don't have to come on system. That's part of row, right? Uh, <laughs> everyone's really scattered. That's where all the no. cleaners sit. I saw those chairs in my uh, <laughs> like in front of the bus. That's right. Tackle. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah? Oh, no, I, I fell asleep in like all my classes. I fell asleep during the haircuts. No, I I did, but even though, it's, I don't know, I just, uh, there's something just sitting through like, like oh. yeah, through an hour and a half. I drew through all my classes. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. So 
he's talking to me and I'm drawing a picture and he can't focus because I'm drawing a picture of Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I look at him and I'm like, is there something you want to ask me about? And he's like, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I used to go to schools and do the dog and pony show where you explain to kids who are in grade three and four about how comics work. And I looked like a guy who might be interested in comics, but I would go with Ken. And we would walk in and none of the kids thought you were a comic book guy. Yeah, who's this guy? Who's this guy? You're a bodyguard! He's actually my bodyguard. You play professional sports. That's right. The kids would just gravitate around Ken. And then it would be great. Well, go actual gravity work. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> Started to draw. He, a pin was, it was unbelievable. It was like, holy crap! That linebacker is drawing! <laughs> I appreciate you saying linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you find that um, uh, you work better in the States as a Canadian or you're happier to be up here? Uh, I like working in both places. I just like working. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 getting a paycheck is nice. Yes. Um, Money is convenient. <laughs> You know, but my, my roots are in Canada and stuff, and uh, which is why we're making this film, is because we just we're hoping with the film, if we can open up some eyes to our own Canadian comic book superhero culture and legacy, then that's great. And if we can spark a little bit of a resurgence in interest and profile some up and coming artists um, who are who are working, then great. You know, and um, it's totally Canadian production. Uh, all the crews Canadian. Uh, we're all doing it. It's very little money, so we're just doing it out of the love of comic books and, and, and kind of trying to showcase a little piece of Canada that people haven't seen. You know, so. Now, speaking of Canadian television, that's where you make your living. How does Canadian television see us? Because you're certainly more plugged into that than anybody else. I, I don't know. I, 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 if you don't nothing know, I mean, do you mean us in comics or yeah, just comics. us as Canadians? You, you work at the station that is entirely devoted to fandom. Uh, how yeah, but, uh, you know, until about, and, until they hired Natasha Eloy, there was no other fan on the staff but me. That was how I felt. And, and that's a pretty weird thing to say. But I, I guess I was there to be, oh, you're the Rolodex, you're the guy who knows everybody, and you can kind of tell us what the fans want. But I remember the turning point for me was 9-11, and at, right after 9-11, they called us in, they had a meeting, and they said, look, you know, this is what's happened, this fear in the States, and it means, of course, that sales are going to go down 30%, and they projected all this stuff. And at the end of the meeting, I went, that's not what's going to happen in space. <laughs> Our ratings are going to go up by 75%, mm -hmm. and this is what's going to happen because in times like this, the sales of the Silver Snail would double. This, right now, space is going to go through the roof, so get ready. Why and bam! It's exactly what happened. And they were like, what? what? And, I, like, and I said, because we are part of a cultural matrix, and I don't think often in terms of being Canadian and not Canadian. However, you know, obviously, I, I, I stand on my soapbox and I champion everybody from, from Canada, but I, at the same time, we're part of a really large cultural international community. It's funny, I, at the same, when you were doing that, I was working on the G.I. Joe one. I was a designer for G.I. Joe. So I did all the Valor vs. Venom and I designed the toys and I did all the package art. And at the time when that happened, I was working on Valor vs. Venom, which is a pretty big line for, for it's all G.I. Joe, it's like a $65 million brand. And um, my studio was doing it. and. You know, you're concerned, you know, I'm doing a military toy, you know, oh, we're here to see what happens. The sales went through the roof. You know, the things were, things were, I was, I got more G.I. Joe work than I cared to shake a stick at. I did it all. You know, and, you know, and it, was, it was a lot of work. I ended up doing some like 85 G.I. Joes in the first two years. It was, it was nuts. I mean, doing all the blister packs and, and people said, why are you doing comics? I said, are you kidding me? I'm getting toy money. <laughs> But it, it was interesting to listen to the American experience at, at that time. They were very like, let's go, let's make G.I. Joe's something, and it was something like crazy. Well, it got very, very militaristic down there, obviously. It was, yeah. it was the time for that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I mean, they even gave me a little bit of respect by making one of the G.I. Joe's look like me. Yeah. <laughs>
That's right. I asked for, I, I pushed for the name Black Ice, but I got Burnout instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I honestly, you, you now, you don't think that way. But I don't think when you're creating G.I. Joe that you're thinking about Canada, or when you, even when you created Northwest Passage and, and the two generals, you were thinking about your, your, your culture and your family, but you weren't thinking about, oh, I'm a Canadian making this, were you? Yeah, well, you're, I mean, you're aware of it. Um, I, I mean, I certainly, when I pitched Northwest Passage originally, I had just done these two books. My first two books with writer Jay Torres, who I'm sure some of you know, um, were the graphic novels Days Like This and Scandalous, which both had a very sort of mid-century Americana. One was set in New York, one was set in Hollywood. And I just, when it came time to pitch my own stuff, I just thought, man, I, I don't want to draw another story set. Why does every goddamn story have to be set in New York or, or California somewhere? And I, and I went out, I pitched that because I aggressively wanted to do something uh, that, that sort of mythologized the Canadian West. I mean, that, that was the original idea. So I, I can't say that it never crosses my mind. Now, when you get down to the nuts and bolts of telling a story, you're thinking about the story, not, not yeah. how to promote Canada. Ty, you should talk about the experience of trying to do Northern uh, Guard and naming okay. it. <laughs> A similar thing, which is that uh, um, when I was doing Northern Guard, if those who don't know, was I, I, I grabbed the characters from the Canadian whites that were all in the public domain at this point, which includes famously Johnny Canuck and the uh, less famous characters such as uh, Freelance and uh, Blackwing and a bunch of other characters like this. And the, um, the fun of it was is to discover, first off, to discover who these characters were, because uh, I didn't really know them anywhere near as, as well as Rob Pincombe did. He got introduced me to a lot of these characters, and I got to discover them. But uh, I was amused to discover that the company that wanted me to do this was an American publisher called Moonstone. And oh, yeah. they approached me and they said, well, there's this huge universe of characters that aren't being used right now. And I think to them, the uh, the, uh, the joy of it was that they were free. Right. And right. They, didn't have anybody <laughs> yeah. and they didn't care what country they yeah. were from. Yeah. 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 So when, yeah. when I put together the pitch and I put together the thing, it was all these Canadian characters, so I had the story taking place in Canada. They went, oh, could, could the story take place in the United States? Right. <laughs> With Johnny Canuck. Yes. Rather yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, yeah, but it'll sell that. And you don't call it Johnny Canuck if you could. Could you call it an, almost the same as Northwood Passage? Yeah. The Northern Guard. The there you are. Yep. As soon as you say Northern in there, we all get that instant sense of tundra and snow, so it must be Canada. Right. And um, they fought constantly against this being Canadian. They, they asked me to do it because I'm a Canadian creator and because I have Pierre Burton deep in my family right. psyche. Right, yeah. If you grow up with Pierre Burton in the house, he makes you read about trains and drunken Canadian friends. <laughs> you eventually absorb this, this patriotism just through through him. And, uh, but the American publisher kept saying repeatedly, no American is interested in these Canadian characters. Try to make them as least Canadian as you can. Mm -hmm. And I found that very, very frustrating. We don't need to go into terribly many details about why the series never finished publishing. <laughs> but um, Americans do seem to uh, almost resent us being here in a way. They don't want to be part of our culture. It does seem to be changing, though, don't you think, with things like Scott Pilgrim, which was unabashedly set in Toronto. But I don't think uh, Americans knew that. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's right. true. You film every movie in Toronto, so Toronto looks like New York. Yeah, yeah. But and even above and beyond that, it's it's unabashed Canadian. This was only there to someone who recognized. Oh my God, they're honest dads. No, yeah. Yeah. I, don't think, yeah. I don't think anybody who lives in Boston is going. Oh my God, they're honest dads. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I mean things like Louis Riel also. I mean, uh, you know, which which uh, I think a lot of Americans seem to have read and, and know about. Um, Boy, that that comic, that graphic novel, is sold over fifty thousand copies in hardcover. I yeah, don't know what I've been up I mean, it's a major thing. So yeah, I yeah, don't know what the sales was in the states, but really great. Yeah, and, and like I said, the Northwest Passage did better in the states than anyone had a right to expect. And uh, I, I think I, I think it is changing to to a certain extent. Um, I hope it doesn't start swinging back the other way. Where your jobs don't get jobs, but the work ethic. Is what you work how you keep the job. Mike Carlin said to me once, the only fireable expense is being late, or the only fireable excuse is being late. He won't fire you for the quality of your work, but if you're consistently late, you don't have a job for company. That's, 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 that's how it works. I'm I am, I am notoriously one of the guys who get this late. Not because I'm, you know, I just, I got better paying stuff. I ain't gonna lie to you. I mean, I, and I, I just, that's the way it is. And I, I've told DC, I mean, or Marvel, even when I'm talking to, to Axel Alonso, I've had crazy fights with Axel. Why don't you commit to comics to be a superstar? 
I said, that's like saying my, my sister's a stripper. Who cares? <laughs> like, she's hot, but she's my sister. Like, who cares? And that's what I'm trying to tell them. I don't, how, am I, how, is that into, how, is that, how does that even relate to my life and my experience? Like, even, even, even if I became a superstar in comics, Francis is making a ton of money. And when he comes to, he does what he can. And when I show up to do my illustrations for Max Steel or whatever, or for Hasbro, I make 10 times what he makes. He goes, fuck. <laughs> and I go, ha <laughs> <laughs> that's, why, that's why I don't do comics, man. For, for years, I used to do t-shirt designs for the Batman Adventure stuff. Yeah. Was, uh, we will not say out loud how much you get paid for those, but it is oh, so bad. Uh, it's, it's, it's preposterous compared to what you get paid for comics. Uh, be, uh, before we wrap up here, um, we have Max Douglas in the audience, and he is... Uh, Max. Yeah. yeah. And I want to hear from Max. Applaud when he says something interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear that. That's interesting. Because you, you are very much entrenched in Montreal right now. We're talking about the Canadian comics identity of this. Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. Uh, as someone who is very much aware of the Montreal scene in comics and stuff. Oh, yeah. You know, I can almost have a home drawing. But when you leave to go buy bread, you're in Montreal. That's how it is. For a few minutes. So talk about Montreal for a bit, because we want the two solitudes to meet. Oh, you really, you probably should not have a I, 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 I spent the last three years trying to get my graphic novel done and, and being a composer. So, uh, it's, it's, it's... Well, what it's happened before years. three years ago? Uh, it's, really, it's an interesting scene. It's really effective. Um, which is starting to be the case in Toronto, too, now. But it definitely, like, when I left Toronto, there was... I don't know. I think, there wasn't really much, as much of an underground or... or there wasn't a general. But Montreal, Montreal is about the only other city around that has the same kind of energy for comics that Toronto It does, and one of the way attracted me to it is it was really diverse. It wasn't just about doing superhero comics or, or right. mainstream comics. Mon so. uh, Quebec culture really embraces itself in a way that the rest of Canada doesn't embrace Anglo culture. Do you find that? Probably, yeah. I mean, they're definitely the whole... Why is that? Why, why does the Quebec culture want to seek out the local creators and buy from them? Um... Well, I'm not 100% sure that that's exactly what they do, but they definitely, they're, they're more interested in celebrating being Quebec, which is, it's a whole part of the, fuck you, you were us. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's an underdog thing, right? We're going, thing, right? Yeah, we're going yeah. to celebrate us because you, I just saw it. But then why does the rest of the country, for instance, have the same attitude of, we're going to celebrate ourselves because the Americans suck? Why well, well we I do, I do. That's exactly, I do what I do because the Americans suck. Pardon? Is that? I don't think you're driving. No, if you're going to shout out, you got to hear it. No, it's just the bicentennial. We won 1812. Fuck you. Yes. That should have been the title. We won 1812. Fuck you. We burned your way. They, 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 they sort of, they sort of do, but it's never been as strong. You know, there's, there's uh, too many of us are. are I'm not sure that we do. I don't think Canadians really embrace other Canadians. We really do run past other Canadians to get. Uh, well, but I mean, the, 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 the buying public. You're you're a credential. No. You're you're a creator. You 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 try as hard as possible to absorb and and promote the other Canadian publishers and creators. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I mean, the whole point of website. So people. Well, the whole point of actually, I started a comics blog. It's a, it started off mostly as a meta blog, so we were just trying to collect stuff people were saying about Canadian comics and put it in one place, and the whole idea being that you can't have a native industry if it's invisible. And, 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 and what's it called? Internet, so people go to Sequential. Sequential.spillthink.org. And it, we're definitely a bit more of an actual healthy blog. Brian Munn uh, does a lot of uh, actual writing, uh, which was something for the first couple of years that when he joined, he was always bemoaning how we don't write enough. <laughs> well, it, I just like
survey.
good. Pardon my scanning tables. Oh damn. I wanted that. Making like a quick ensemble video of all the tables. Entirely spineless and the like, but in this case he's he's, he's just a bookworm. Okay. Yeah, he, he's he's like a little awkward, but he ends up changing. Doing the montage of tables. It's getting a montage of all the tables, but it's just music, you know. What you missed? You missed Cliff. No? That's good. It's going to get in there back. Cool. I think that's right. I think that's right. You want the audience in the shot. I'm not much of a mystical kind of guy. No, no, but you might <laughs> How would you say that, Alphonse? What? I'm going to videotape the table if you don't mind. You're welcome. Je vais videotaper la table si ça vous dérange pas. Oh shit, that's gone. One of the ways that I uh, first impressed my girlfriend was to give, loan her one of your books to read. Oh, <laughs> is that true? That's true. Wow. Her father grew up in uh, Montreal. Caleb. So, uh, C A L E B. Caleb. Yep. I can do that. Yes. Three? <laughs> what do you mean left? For most of the styles in the book, is it just stuff that you experience? Yeah, yeah. Just doing a tail porn. Okay, cool. Sure. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. I'll get another shot. I got a, a clip to put on sequential with all the stuff. All the things you didn't get to see. 
Things that people didn't come to missed. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Oh, 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 Ha, ha, ha. 